我先提问一下啊，咱们上节课学的什么 ？What did we learn from last week? Uh, from actually Tuesday's class. 徐亚天说说。Interatomic bonding. No, actually, this is a topic that we are going to talk about today. Interatomic bonding. What did we learn last uh, on Tuesday? Atomic structure. We are talking about what is composed of, uh, what is an atom composed of, right? An atom is composed of uh, proton plus neutron and also electrons. And also, we were talking about what is the electronic cons uh, configuration for each atom. We talk about the atomic models. Now, what are the first, very first atomic model that was developed in this world? What, what was the first atomic model? Zhang Qian. Bohr, Bohr's atomic model. What did Bohr, Bohr say in that model? If you just cannot say it in English, you can try it in Chinese. Then what, what is the difference between Bohr's atomic model and other atomic model later on? What's the difference between his model and the later or currently accepted models? No, actually Bohr's, Bohr's model, he, he talked about atomic model in, in his mathematical analysis was that all the elect electrons are rotating on certain orbits but the the position of those electrons are fixed in addition to, uh, but what is different from Bohr's model is the wave mechanical model what what the wave mechanical model said was the electrons are you cannot just determine which electron is on which orbit, but we only can say we know the probability density, or we only know the probability of those electrons to be in those certain orbits, okay? We just cannot tell the exact position of those electrons, because that's based on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, okay? So these two models are different. Bohr's model was the first one, what he said was, the energy is not continuous, but quantized, okay? Electrons are on fixed orbits, but the wave mechanical model said the energy is, of course, is also quantized, but you cannot say each electron or each small particle is on which position exactly, okay? So they just cannot determine the space and time exactly at the same time, okay? so. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle said you can only know the probability of seeing those particles on a position that is at some distance from the nucleus. Okay, so this is the difference between the two atomic models. Okay, then the great contribution from another scientist, Schrodinger, was he developed a wave function. Okay, Psi, X, Y, Z, and T, okay, so that based on the wave function, he'll be able to calculate or deduce some of the quantum numbers, okay? So this is a place where we last, uh, left off last week, uh, last lecture, and also this is a place where we're gonna start today. So let's look at the quantum numbers again, okay? Uh, based on the wave function that is developed by Schrodinger, uh, people, will be able to calculate the quantum numbers. We have four quantum numbers. Now, the first quantum number is the angular quantum. No, actually, this is the second one. I didn't print the first one. First one is, which one is the first one? First one is the the n, right? It's the principal quantum number. It tells 
the number of shells, okay, the major shells. Now the second quantum number is what we have here, the first one, the angular quantum number L. Okay, now the second quantum number also denoted with the lowercase SD, SPDF basically defines the subshell within each shell because each shell is denoted by the principal quantum number n we have n equals to one two and three but the subshell can be defined as s p d and f okay now this is the second quantum number now the third quantum number is what what is the third quantum number if what we have here m l it is also called the magnetic quantum number which tells us the number of energy states of each electron okay the number of energy states and what is the last quantum number last quantum number is also called the spin projection quantum number It's related to the spinning moment or is related to the status of how the electron is gonna spin okay so it can be either positive one half or negative one half based on the uh, calculation so we have first principal quantum number n we have second one is the angular quantum number l we have the magnetic quantum number ml and we also have the spin projection quantum number ms then after that we were talking about the Pauli exclusion principle what this principle says, only one electron can have a given set of the four quantum numbers. Okay, any two single electrons cannot have exactly the same four quantum number. Okay, so this is the uh, famous Pauli exclusion principle. Now let's look at the third uh, slice, uh, which tells us the number of electrons in atoms. Okay, so the number of ele available electron states in some of the electron shells and subshells are listed in this table where you can see the principal quantum number uh, are defined as one two three and four right so for shell number one we have only subshell s but for when the con uh, n equals to two we have s and p subshells right now when n equals to three we have spd subshells when n equals to four we have spdf subshells now what is the number of states for each subshell for s subshell we have only one number of states electron states and for p we have three and for d we have five and for f we have seven number of electron states that's that's denoted with the magnetic quantum number and also, what is the number of electrons per subshell uh, is based on the number of states. Because each electron will have either positive one half or negative one half spin configurations. Therefore, uh, for S, we have two electrons. For subshell P, we have six. And for D, we have 10. And for F, we have 14. So the total number of electrons in each shell will be 2, 8, 18, 32 based on the shell number or based on the principal quantum number. Therefore, we say that 2n squared is the calculation for the total number of electrons in a certain element depending on how many principal quantum number you have or determine 